Tony D and little Joan in the background somewhere. And this is uh, just another video. Uh, call it a hot take, if you will. Um, there's really not a lot of good trailers out. Thought I'd mix it up, do something different on a weekend. I want to talk about, um, you know, uh, something I get asked all the time in uh, interviews and whatnot about uh, why I chose... Uh, to write about the Pineys in South Jersey. And the reason I did that um, was because, uh, you know, it, it, it came to me after many years, right? So when I first started writing stuff, mainly I was writing comedy sketches and having a lot of fun with that. Uh, I think before that I had done a lot of, you'd probably call it fan fiction as a kid. So, um, I always tell the story how I won a short story contest in first grade and the stories I wrote, and I kept winning every month until the school asked me to stop entering so one of the other kids could win. But what I kept writing was, um, my version of Inspector Clouseau. So it was called The Inspector and it was basically an American version of Inspector Clouseau, a clumsy detective who would somehow solve mysteries. And then, um... After that, I tried to write a screenplay, but I didn't understand the format at all. And uh, I just decided to write prose. This is like my early teens. I just decided to write prose describing what the movie would be. Right? And that turned into some... It was almost like a novella, but like... Kind of like half novella, half screenplay, I guess you would call it. And I wrote pages and pages of this crap. <laughs> and um, that was based on some Disney properties that, of course, I didn't understand how any of that worked. And um, so when I finally got to the point, probably in my college years, that I started thinking about, well, how can I, I can actually write stuff and sell it and make money? You know, I had it. I had an idea in my head that I could just write for money so in other words I could just write what my employers wanted I thought and then they would just pay me because oh yeah that's exactly what we wanted and uh, I tried that for many years and I've talked to so many writers who have tried to do that now some of them ex succeed partially I would say it's, it's mostly by accident because part of the problem is when you're writing for whether it's another producer or you know a publisher or whatever they kind of don't know what they want not really it's kind of the old saying I'll know it when I see it and it also has to do like a lot of times I'll have clients that I'm writing for and I'll write them something and at first they read it and they go wow this is great I love it you know and then they go well let me read it again and then they read it again and they're like well, I didn't like it as much on the second time I read it well and then what I try to explain to them is well the reason you don't like it as much on the second time is because the first time you read it it was new now you're reading it again and now you're seeing potentially problems you're 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 think overthinking it to some degree and you know the fact that you read through it once and the first time and just thought oh wow this is amazing that's the reaction your audience will have usually and um, that's exactly what you're going for right and yeah some things don't age as well when you go back and reread them uh, it's true for some movies and books or whatever but mostly you've won uh, 80 to 90 percent of the game if you read through something wow that was great let me read it again and then you know again the second time um so when i was developing my uh, stories i uh eventually you know I, I had done some screenplays and i was trying to sell stuff and it wasn't really working for a lot of different reasons which i won't go into but then uh as i started to sort of uh, mature more as a writer what I tried to do is try to find something that I thought was important 
anyone and me. And so when I first started doing uh, uh, comics, I started. Uh, let's see if I can find this. The fix site. Dot com. Okay. There we go. I started with um, the Jersey Devil. And I did the Jersey Devil comics. And, um, you know, things went really well. Uh, pretty well for, you know, indie comics that I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, so I worked on that and promoted it a lot like I promote the Pineys today. And um, eventually I started to expand. I started to do other comics. I did The Travelers, which was a fantasy comic based on my D&D characters. And doing this by myself, the I couldn't sell enough of them, really. It wasn't until I got involved with Kenzer and & Company and uh, they pushed it because they were selling so many comics. I was that, you know, they were selling tens of thousands of comics. I was selling thousands of comics. And so then I, I, I had some pretty good success with the Travelers. We made some money. Um, not a lot, but some. And then came, uh, you know, after that, going back on my own uh, with The Fix. Now, The Fix was like totally me. And then uh, I had a book publisher for a book that was a tie-in to this. Um, and it was, uh, uh, it, financially, it was a disaster. <laughs> I mean, there's no way around it. Um, I really like how it came out. I like the comics and the book, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't sell it. And I, I was very frustrated as to why. And with the Travelers, it was easy to see, like, well, you know, I had access to a huge audience thanks to a second comic. And I was able to sort of... Uh, you know, a glom on to some of their fan base with, but with Jersey Devil, I had done that totally on my own. And so with the fix, I was very frustrated. Like, why didn't this happen again? Because I actually spent some real money on advertising that time. And, you know, and I was doing other projects too, but I thought about it and I said, you know, maybe it's because it's, you know, even though it's a fun story and everything, and I've done tons of fun stories over the years, maybe it just wasn't important, you know? And I had done Super Frat, which was a really solid concept, and, um, you know, I had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, let me see if I can get to it without... Frat. I don't want to go to my admin page. So... Um, now, why can't I get this super fat? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, like doing super frat. Again, some success. Um, I had done the leap to web comics. So web comics were hot, but couldn't quite monetize it right because I didn't know what I was doing. It was a completely different model. And by the time we figured it out, they were already starting to die. And, uh, and I couldn't get enough of them out couldn't do enough of them to monetize. Like with web comics, you had to monetize very quickly. It had to build and, and part of the whole problem with comics is uh, as a writer, I needed the artist. And the moment the artist got bored or I couldn't pay him enough or they got married or something happened, I needed a new artist and changing artists on a comic, unless you always get amazing guys and their styles are relatively the same, the, the fans hate it when you change artists. So I realized at that point, not only did I have to uh, do something more important in terms of a subject matter, um, even though I had strong concepts. And, it, and, you, and look, Super Frat is one of the strongest concepts. I almost got a movie deal on Super Frat uh, just because the concept's so strong and it writes itself. And... Uh, you know, we were working with producers for a few years and trying to get the thing going. Never did. Never even signed a contract for the damn thing. But um, uh, I felt it was close. I mean, it got passed around Hollywood. And um, 
So the next project, like the project, I'd reached the point where like I kind of know what I'm doing, right? Um, and you kind of, you know, every three to six years, you kind of look back on your life or your career or whatever, and you go, God, I was such an idiot three to five years ago. Now I'm smart. Now I'll do the right thing. And then, you know, three to five years goes by and then you do the same thing over and over again. Like you're constantly reevaluating and looking back on your past self going, God, he was an idiot. Um, so then I said, uh, let's do the Pineys uh, because this could be important, right? It could be important to people who live in South Jersey to hear their history. And uh, these are important interesting stories some of them kind of forgotten about history and I could take them I could sort of rework them a little into a fun story and so I'm sort of educating people but sort of entertaining them at the same time and that's kind of why I started to do it and I wanted to go back to the Jersey Devil stuff because reading more about it I realized man there were all these comics I didn't get a chance to make and then sort of like the floor dropped out from underneath me and I realized, my God, there were hundreds of stories. There weren't just like a handful. There were literally hundreds of stories that I hadn't really read about. And then, you know, magazines like Weird New Jersey and um, I started reading that and I'm like, geez, I could have done a thousand comics if um, the Jersey Devil comic had taken off. So the Pineys in a lot of ways is, you know, a thousand, a thousand comics. I mean, the comics couldn't jam this much information, you know. Like if you took the Pineys book 14, the pirate Piney, and um, turned it into a graphic novel. Like as a novel, it's 120 pages. As a graphic novel, gosh. I don't even know how long it would be. <laughs> uh, I I say it would be very long. I, I, I would say it would be 200 plus. You know? I don't think you could cram it in to... Maybe you could cram it into 100 if you cut things, but there's a lot. I mean, just a lot happens in any novel, and even in a novella as short as this one. You know? Um... So, I don't know. I, you know, hmm, I wonder how long it would be. I don't think it would be, you know, the novel comes out to 120 pages. I got to think it would be longer than that. Especially the action scenes. Because they really add the, uh, the pages on a comic. But, so, what this video is all about, sorry for that long wind up, is why do you pick something important? Well, the Pineys is important to me important to the audience so it's not just a subject matter it's I don't want to say it's like a crusade or a cause but it's it's something that you know I'm not the only person doing this kind of stuff and it's it's how do I say it it it's It's needed, right? It's needed, I think. And so many projects I see out there, comics or novellas or whatever, they're just not needed, you know? They're, they're stories that, I mean, you can tell them, and I'm not knocking you, but they're not needed. There's not a, there's not a real audience for it. It's a there's a big audience broadly speaking for sci-fi fantasy whatever but you know is there a, a desperate need like sometimes I would say with like Game of Thrones you know there was a need for not just fantasy there hadn't been a lot of fantasy on TV but a high quality fantasy and stuff that was different than all the other things we had seen before all the other TV fantasy stuff had been kind of whimsical, wimpy stuff or too caught up in its own 
epicness. And then Game of Thrones kind of gave us this down in the dirt, gritty thing that was very detailed. And that, I think, hit on the audience. It hit them at the right time. Same thing with The Walking Dead, as much as I have many, many problems with that show. Uh, the Walking Dead hit at a time when, yeah, there was some zombie stuff out there, but it was never, it was never like The Walking Dead. Like The Walking Dead gave you this soap opera in a zombie universe, and it, um, you know, it wasn't about like most zombie projects are all about the outbreak, which is the best part of the movie, right? zombies and then you know then it ends with the last survivors going wherever I mean that's what's fun about it the the actual outbreak is always awesome uh, that's why I think um, Zombieland 2 I think it was 2 ends with Bill Murray at the outbreak which I which I find very fun <laughs> um, so I do the Pineys because I think there's a real need for it. There's a real hunger for it. You know, I tell people uh, there it's about a family of hunters that hunt the kin of the Jersey Devil, and 99% of the time, the response is always one word. Cool. <laughs> and, like, it's like, yes, this is what I want. Why hasn't someone done this before? And so that's when you know I think you've hit upon something that people want and that's what a lot of creators talented though they may be good their stories may be sometimes they just don't hit on it and you can make up for that if you have a lot of money a lot of persistence and you just last for years and years and years or maybe you know in the case of comics like I think Todd McFarlane's Spawn you know, as much as I have nothing but respect for Todd McFarlane, seriously, the guy has made a mint on that character. But, you know, creatively, I wish it was better. I just, you know, I think the moment Todd stops pushing it, the moment he's, he won't even be cold and people will start forgetting about Spawn. And I don't say that in any kind of criticism of him. He's very talented. Uh, in terms of his art and even his ideas but man the writing to me could be so much better so much better and I don't even know now with a uh, property like that if it'll ever rise above wherever it is <clears throat> excuse me you know and you can look at Batman and you could look at all these comic book characters but in the end they all kind of I don't know they, 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 they get compromised to the point where, you know, they're not great anymore. You know, and I think there's something to be said for a guy like Dave Sim who wouldn't compromise his character and he really built it up and then he ended it. And, and I have great respect for him too, you know, creatively. Um, he made money. He made his money and I, I don't know what he's doing now, but um, uh, you know but with a creator I think if you've been in this a while like usually new guys they get in they're just going to do what they like you know whatever you like whether it's vampires or I don't know fantasy stuff or horror or comedy or whatever you're just going to do what you like to do and that's perfectly fine but when you're finally looking to take it to the next level to take it to something that you truly love that's kind of a mission that's going to be your sort of opus that's when you really have to think what is important what can I do that's super important you know that people are really that people need not just want but they need it and that's and I'm not trying to toot my own, own horn here but I'm just trying to tell you that's the next step I think for a lot of creators you have to do something that people need and uh, there is a need for this kind of stuff the pine for the pineys and there are need a need for other books too I mean 
to some extent there was a need for characters like Spawn because they they just were different and they were created by in, an independent guy who didn't have to play exactly by the rules and so he got to go outside the lines a little bit but you know but there is a real need now in the world of comics especially for uh, old school values I don't think we quite gotten there yet with the stuff that's being produced independently but maybe someday some guy will rise up uh, it might be the crew or in and around Eric July something that might come out of that um, I don't know if it's gonna be uh, I, I don't want to get into it some of the other crew let's say but um, yeah so when you're looking to take it to that next step you've done a few projects and maybe they've gone okay maybe done some have done okay you know fairly well and you're kind of kicking around the next idea like the idea that you really want it to go to the next level you got to pick something that's important to you and important to the audience something that people need anyhow those are my thoughts and that's it for me tony d and little joan check us out on odyssey bitroot and rumble for our more base takes if you can find a more base take i say take it tomorrow will be the live stream father's day live stream at 7 p.m uh we're going to talk about inside out it's kicking it i mean i didn't think it would make this kind of money but apparently uh it did who knew all right we'll see you in the next one